at the ACC Women's Tournament. Liz Kitley, the ACC Player of the Year, standing at the center of the court, ready to start her Hokies quest for an ACC championship. Carla Fountain, Jeff Smith, Katie looking at our officials this afternoon as the Hokies in white. The five seed in this tournament, ranked number 21 in the country, start off with the basketball. Kitley, her face-up game so good all season long. And Virginia Tech will use their screening action to get that pop-out face-up look for Kitley. Here's Delisha Washington coming off those 33 points, tied for the most ever in a first-round game in ACC tournament history. Robinson over to Hank, who had 17 points. Hannah Hank, terrific performance with seven of eight from the floor. Career high for her yesterday. Shepard back to Kitley. Under 10 now for the Hokie offense. And the lane open right up. The dish a couple of times in the paint. Maybe one pass too many. Nice job by Clemson defensively of collapsing. They'll have to do that a lot on Kitley on the interior. Clemson did a good job on Kitley in their regular season meeting. It was other Hokies who had to carry the weight to win the game as Kitley had just two points season low in that game. They were physical with her. They fronted her, denied her looks, and really took away shooting opportunities for her. But everyone else did the work, though, Jen. Everyone else pitched in. Hokies got the win at home 73-42, despite that season low in points from Kitley. It was Azana Baines and Asia Shepard that picked up the load. Both had 20 plus points. Let's take a moment here, LaChina. Get your four keys to the game for this matchup. Yeah, when looking at these two teams, I think Clemson has to consider their transition defense first because Virginia Tech is so good at coming down the floor and getting early offense. And then for Virginia Tech, match Clemson's physicality. What you know about an Amanda Butler coach team, they're going to be physical, they're going to be tough, they're going to try to take away your space, and Virginia Tech has to fight through that to get clean shots. Tough shot there for Washington, and credit Hank just for keeping the possession alive. Shot clock getting into single digits now, though. Kayla King has the assignment of Delisha Washington. She's Virginia Tech's best perimeter defender, but everyone defended Washington on that possession. It's probably about what it's going to take, and Kenny Brooks told us as much when we talked to him yesterday. You, you can't think you're going to stop what she does with just one defender. 4-0 lead for the Hokies. Hank trying to defend Kitley on the inside. Four points in the game now for the ACC Player of the Year. Surprised that there wasn't another body to come over and, and meet Kitley as it was clear that Hannah Hank got beat. Kitley from Summerfield, North Carolina, not too far from Greensboro, her family here in attendance as they are for most of her games throughout the season. Amari Robinson finally gets the Tigers on the board. And that's the shot that will be available for Amari Robinson today. Yesterday against a smaller Syracuse lineup, she was able to go inside. She's going to have to face up today against a taller shot blocker in Kitley. And when Asia Shepard's first shot looks like that, watch out. 9-2 Virginia Tech lead. Timeout on the floor. And the ACC's all-time three-point leader adds another to her tally. Nothing but net for Shepard. If you're a man making too many bathroom trips, try Super Beta Prostate Advanced. It's the only formula with Prostafend, an advanced blend to help you reduce bathroom trips both day and night. Available at Walmart and other fine retailers. Running the sanctuary absolutely brings me peace. The work is 100% cathartic for me. You know, I find myself getting tied up in it and being busy, and then it's really nice just to sit, breathe in life, and it's beyond zen. Sweetie, can you roll your brother up the driveway? Remember when we used to do that? 
We were always afraid something would happen to us when we thought we didn't have time for life insurance. But Ethos makes applying for life insurance so easy that 10 minutes could protect your family for as little as $10 per month. There's no med exams or obligation to purchase. With some health questions in a fast, easy online application, you could get same-day coverage on affordable policies from top-rated carriers. To get a quote in seconds, go to ethoslife.com. My goodness! What a machine! Look how it tiptoes that baseline. So nimble. It crosses over left, mows right. Someone go check the angles on that gnome. Everyone is raving about the Works Landroid Robotic Lawnmower. It's been doing hill work all off season, and its coach calls the plays from the palm of his hand. Its stats are absolutely eye popping. Over 4.5 million hours of mowing saved. This kid is the future. Go to mylandroid.com and add a robotic lawnmower to your yard team. Another award and trophy in the hands of the ACC Player of the Year, Liz Kitley, with ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips before the game as she was awarded the Kayao Scholar Athlete of the Year. And for more on Liz Kitley, that gives us a chance to bring in Tabitha Turner-Wilkins. Hey, Tabitha. Thanks, Jim. Well, guys, we know the great player Elizabeth Kitley is today. She's the ACC Player of the Year. But Elizabeth almost did end up playing basketball at all. Growing up, Elizabeth played volleyball, basketball, and softball. And softball is where she eventually migrated because that's the sport that all her friends played. Now, her fork in the road eventually came up when Liz's dad, Ralph, met an AAU coach named Tom King. King had a daughter named Kayla King. <laughs> King convinced Ralph, who after a couple tries, convinced Liz that basketball was where her future was at. By their sophomore and junior seasons, Liz and Kayla had won two state championships and eventually decided to play at Virginia Tech on the same team together. Guys. All right, high five, Kayla King. Good work recruiting okay. takes to basketball. Takes a community. I can I can say even especially as a as a big girl, you know, you kind of resist basketball. I was <laughs> six four and wanted to be a cheerleader. Clearly barking up the wrong tree. And you know, I feel like Dad probably was gonna say, "Come on, you know, it runs in the family, Liz, and he played at Wake Forest, and it's pretty good school. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. I thought you might think that." So let's see what Clemson does out of that timeout, needing to make sure this deficit does not get too far out of hand. Bradford travels. Well, there are a couple of things about Clemson's offense. Number one, they're best in transition. So if they're not getting scoring on the run, they have to set up their half-court offense. And their best option there is Delisha Washington. But the defense collapsed on her early, and she's actually getting a little bit of a break right now. Open look for Amor, and it's good. Virginia Tech does a nice job of setting screens, that time a stagger for Amor. Clemson's got to fight through those and anticipate the lineup from the three-point line. Hokies looking sharp so far. They have yet to miss a shot. Different story on this side for Clemson. The Tigers just one of five to start the game. Shepard. Pass to the corner, King couldn't quite keep it in. Take a look at this offense by Virginia Tech. You see Amor kind of sets up this cut here, comes all the way around off of the double screen, stagger from Kitley and Baines and wide open. If you are Clemson, you got to get on the top side of that and you got to be willing to fight through some screens. Such great numbers for Amor. I mean, she runs this team for the point guard spot, but also the top three-point shooter by percentage in conference games, over 40% on the season. Pretty impressive, although her numbers have been down the last couple games. So it's a good start for her. She does commit the foul this time as Gaines goes to the basket. And Kiki Gaines off the bench. And this is where Clemson has that advantage in the half court is their ability to drive the basketball and get to the rim. They've got to use their speed, their versatility off of the bounce and be a little creative in how they can get to the rim. Good to see Kiki Gaines back out there for Amanda Butler as she gets a moment to talk with Alicia Washington. You might have seen yesterday, Gaines took an elbow to the throat from her own teammate, Hannah Hank. Was able to come back, which was good. And this was after that happened. You could see she was definitely still feeling things a little bit. Yeah, she took a nice hit to the throat. I mean, it looked pretty bad. So for her to be out here running around right now is a good sign. It shows her level of toughness.
Shepard to Kitley. That duo, so good for the Hokies. Textbook pick and roll action. And if you stay too long, you're worried about Shepard, and you don't rotate back to Kitley, that's way too easy. And again, I'm just surprised there aren't more bodies for Clemson in the paint, but it's hard because Virginia Tech shoots the three so well. Robinson had her space closed down pretty quickly, and then Hannah Hank will be going to the free throw line, gets Kitley to commit her first personal foul. Asia Shepard and Kitley together in a pick and roll is dangerous because you're worried about the driving ability, the mid-range shot in the three from Shepard, and there Kitley is on the backside wide open. And then on the other side, this is where Amari Robinson's versatility can be seen once again. She's an excellent facilitator that plays a post position and finds Hank, and, and Hank attacked the shot blocker, which is also a, a really good decision. I mean, if you can get Kitley in some foul trouble and get her on the bench, that may be the best defense you have against the ACC Player of the Year. She gets a little rest here as we're just before that first media timeout, which occurs under the five-minute mark. Asia Gregg has been an important piece off the bench, transferred to Virginia Tech this season, but she gets called for the offensive foul here. A couple of really good plays for game. We saw her on the offensive end, but here just stays low, moves her feet, and you see the elbow by Gregg there to create some separation. Game's outside of the RA, just a, a really good play there. And you get the feeling too, LaChina, it could be some plays like that that on the defensive end can get this Clemson team going a little bit, see if they can try to carry over some of that momentum from their great performance yesterday and win against Syracuse. Hank, open look. And that's a winning defensive possession for Virginia Tech because they got the ball out of the hands of Washington. Kitley and Shepard both on the bench at the moment for Virginia Tech, Kayana Trailer driving and Shepard is out there excuse me Kitley on the bench first foul against Maddie Ott here is Shepard sees King open for three and she drains it and the Hokies are six for six Perfect so far, and they've assisted on every basket. Robinson, the spin, and the move. Good with, for two. With Kitley out, that shot is available for Robinson, and she's got just as good a footwork as any big in this conference. Ott goes down to the floor. There is some contact, but no foul call. That just winds up going out of bounds. Turnover, Hokies. Asia Shepard just drives the baseline hard here, drives the, gets the extra defender to bite, and then King knocks down the three. And you forget about that aspect of Asia Shepard's games sometimes, just how quick she is off of the bounce. And Robinson continue to take advantage of Kitley on the bench. She goes up against Greg, so that'll be two fouls on DeAsia Greg. Robinson will be headed to the free throw line. Yeah, I like the call from Amanda Butler with Kitley out, and she's going to come back in the game now. But <laughs> Robinson was able to get a couple buckets off before she has to now think about shot blocking. And here just takes the baseline and, and again, using her body and her strength. She is so strong and just plays on balance which always gives her an opportunity to use the glass and get a good look at the bucket. And you saw her numbers yesterday, 12 points. Five of seven from the floor to get those 12, had nine rebounds as well. And in that loss to Virginia Tech in the regular season, she was actually one of the stars for Clemson where the bright spots had 14 points. And she started off this one, taking advantage with Kitley on the bench. Now five points in the game for Robinson. Trailer, so quick to the basket, had it tapped away though. It'll stay with Virginia Tech. Beyond the trailer, 
is one of the wrinkles for Virginia Tech this year on their roster that I have enjoyed playing. She is so aggressive, can get going downhill, lefty, so you were not always in position to really guard. I don't know where Kitley was going with that one. Bradford gets to the basket, and the Tigers trying to close in on this Virginia Tech lead. Clemson can get out in transition, certainly something that can benefit them as Trailer goes in his foul. 26 fast break points yesterday for the Tigers and they're winning in Syracuse. Clemson is best in the open court and this is how they can do it. Putting a little pressure on Virginia Tech with their defense and Nunu Bradford off to the races. And that just takes aggressiveness, anticipation, and I just think that's the speed that Clemson has to play at defensively. A little bit hectic to cause Virginia Tech to make some mistakes. Trailer on the free throw line. Spent three years at Purdue. Over 300 assists in her career there. And Penny Brooks talked about, you know, there is a transition period. She has fit in beautifully with this group, but with an established group like he has, it does still take some time. That's been part of the evolution of this team all season. Washington is stopped. Amor got a little bit of a hand in there to try to help out defensively. Clemson being aggressive trying to go to the basket. They do force Virginia Tech to commit another foul. Tigers now in the bonus rest of the quarter. King has done a good job of containing Alicia Washington. But what you notice about Clemson's offense in the last few possessions, it's been other players stepping up. And what you hope happens is that the defense then has to stay honest and you get some looks for Washington. And just one field goal attempt so far for Delisha Washington. Bradford coming off an 11 point performance, go along with seven assists yesterday. She's been playing well the last few games. The last four of the regular season, averaging 15 points per game. It's 10 of 22 from three in that stretch. She now has four. And Clemson within five. Shepard, that was a tough pass to try to get through to Kitley. Washington behind the back. The finish, no. But Robinson is there. Another offensive rebound. Boy, this Tiger team. They go after it on the boards, don't they? And Washington, that is not a sight we like to see. Gosh, she's been going so hard. Still down on the floor. And remember, she went down awkwardly yesterday on a play that we were kind of surprised she just bounced back from. I'm sure she got a lot of ice, but... Yeah, as I recall, she did a, a matrix-like bend with a slip on the floor in the game yesterday. Obviously, it did not deter her with her 33-point performance. It was 8 of 10 from the free throw line to go along with 50% shooting, had 11 rebounds, 5 assists. And we'll take another look at the play. right mm -hmm. leg or ankle. Hank may have fallen on her there a little bit. Not quite sure though. Yeah, watch the right leg. It's just, it's trapped in there in that jumble of limbs from other players. Yeah. You know, a tournament tests your team unlike anything you will have in the regular season when you play these back-to-back -back games. It is tough in every way, physically, mentally, emotionally. Mari Robinson's parents, sister, dad and sister looking on as the leash is back to her feet. And because Delisha just plays all out on every possession, you know, in a game like this where she just had 33 points last night, 11 rebounds, I mean, was doing everything. I mean, fatigue definitely plays a part. 
Tigers trying to keep their season alive here in Greensboro. So Hannah Hank, their number 12 in the middle. I think it is her leg that kind of squashes Delisha's underneath it. So I'm sure Tabitha will be all over that for us, trying to give us updates as we can get them. But for now, Tigers leading score, one of the stars of this tournament so far, headed to the locker room for the Tigers. Kitley, short. Who else will step up with Washington Al, You mentioned she's not been that active offensively in the game. Just two field goal attempts, no points, but obviously such a big presence. And it has been other players so far for Clemson who have tried to help carry the load. Good defense there by Lytle, jumping in, collapsing. Clemson's gonna have to take it in bounds here. Emily Lytle transfer from Liberty joining the Hokies this season. Gaines with the drive. Kitley stood her ground. It's a couple possessions where Liz Kitley has been a factor at the rim for Virginia Tech, and then an easy one the other way. That's where that transition defense, one of our keys to the game for Clemson was transition D because Tech can get on the board early. Seven points in the game for Georgia Amor. The lead back to seven for Virginia Tech. They've led by as many as 11 in this first quarter. Robinson. There's a foul right there in front of Carla Fountain. We saw Kiki Gaines and Kayla King both involved in the play. Will be the second personal on King. On the drive, Clemson looking to be aggressive at the rim, but Liz Kitley is there. She doesn't even have to block the shot. It's just her size and her presence. And then Amor with the look off and crossover gets right to the rack. So Clemson with an opportunity. Now King will go to the bench for Virginia Tech to get some points at the free throw line. And yesterday against Syracuse, the Tigers are really good. They were 17 for 20 on the line. And this is where this less experienced lineup for Clemson without Delisha Washington has to rally on behalf of their leader. She has been carrying them all season long. Now someone's got to step up in these moments while she is out and, and really try to keep Clemson in this game and hope she returns. Well, the Tigers are taking advantage of what they've been given. Nine for 10 from free throws in this first quarter. Nine of their 15 points. Shepard with a rare miss. Hope he's still seven of nine overall from the floor in this first quarter. And Amari Robinson can make the foul her first. It's the fourth team foul for the Tigers in the quarter. Sydney Standifer checking in for the Tigers. Now check that. Skyler Blackstock now in 21. Shepard will try another and hit it. Asia Shepard now has tied her own single season record. If there's a three-point record anywhere in the vicinity of Asia Shepard, you better just assume it's going away. She has broken the Virginia Tech single-season record the last two years. One more, and she'll make it three in a row. Shepard, the drive, and the two. And a couple of possessions, you see exactly why Asia Shepard is so special. Knocking down the three, getting to the rack, she has a full arsenal. Shepard named the All-ACC second team this season. She was an All-ACC first team selection the last two. If this is to be her last appearance in Greensboro, she's trying to make the most of it for her Tigers. Final seconds of the first quarter. Counted down here in the arena. Bradford to beat it. Can't get it to go, and the Hokies after a nearly perfect first quarter, they shoot 82%. They lead Clemson by 10. Virginia Tech in control. Asia Shepard, she can do that with her eyes closed. Three-pointer, good. Virginia Tech's all-time leader in three-pointers made, and now ACC leader all-time in three-pointers made, Asia Shepard. 
points in the game for Shepard, six for Kitley in that first quarter. And Clemson changed a, a little bit defensively a couple possessions ago to this zone, which is dangerous because of the way that Virginia Tech can shoot the three. <laughs> On cue. <laughs> On cue, yeah. <laughs> Trailer and both, at the triple. And both times they nailed the three. Clemson's going to have to dig deep here. Tabitha, you had a chance to listen in to Amanda Butler that last time out? Yeah, guys. I mean, Amanda Butler passionately came into her huddle and sat down, and she said, guys, I don't know if y'all think it's okay because Whip's not on the floor, and Whip is Delisha Washington, but we don't settle for jump shots. We're not doing things with our heart out there. We're doing things just to get by, and it's not good enough. There's got to be more. Guys, might I add that Delisha Washington just was back on the bench. She went back out to get checked out again in the locker room, but she was out here a second ago with her team. I mean, it's going to be tough to keep her off the floor, I think, Tabitha. And we see her sitting at the scorer's table, ready to check in right now. But I love that, though, from Amanda Butler on Eula China. I mean, that's, that's so her, right? To yeah. Challenge the heart. That's what her team needs right now. And the thing is, she has such a great pulse on the identity of her team. She knows what they can and can't do. And this is not the time to play outside of yourself because Virginia Tech is too good. They will capitalize on any mistakes, bad possessions. Got to be smart. Butler's fourth season at Clemson, but her time with Delisha Washington Whip, as you just heard her nickname used, work in progress. That goes back to their days at the University of Florida. And there is nothing to motivate you like this is the potentially your last time on a basketball court with your college teammates. So Washington may be hurting, but she is back out there for the Tigers. Trailer with the drive. There is contact and a foul called that is going to go against Veronica Hip for first for the Tigers. Kenny Brooks having a chat with his point guard. He knows a little something about playing the point. His days as a player. Yeah, I know we heard the story from Tabitha earlier in the game about Liz Kitley's dad and how great of a player he was at Wake Forest. And he said, you know, Liz's dad turned her over to a point guard to teach her <laughs> <laughs> some post moves, when obviously her dad knows a little bit about that. Uh, but it just speaks to the trust that the family has had in, in Coach Brooks and his ability to develop Liz. And boy, she is a fantastic player. Got that scholar athlete of the year award before the game. And she is a scholar on the floor and off as Delisha goes to work. Her first points of the game. That was a fancy dance move it to get was. that score. She looks like she's doing okay. Yeah. If you had any doubt, I was trying to put it out of your mind. And this is going to be a foul against the Hokies. Now she does have a little bit of a limp as she comes up the floor, but this is what she can do off of the bounce. Little shake and break, little crossover. And just a blur getting to the rim. And it's her ability to really create an angle off the glass when there isn't one. I mean, she's just fun to watch. That limp is not going to show up when she's making moves like that. <laughs> or the crossover. Pull it back. Good defense being played right there with Trailer on Washington. Here goes Hank. Tough to get over and around. Kitley at 6'6 with her arms up in the air. Amor so quick. Back to Shepard. Shot fake. Basket. The stop and pop. The patience and the poise to wait for the shot to develop. Asia Shepard in just the first half of this game is showing us a lot of what she can do. Ten points in the game for Shepard. Two for three from beyond the arc. Robinson, offensive foul. That's her second personal. And that's a possession where Robinson's got to go back to the baseline side. She was just so set on going middle when she had a clear baseline. She would have just gone left. You've got to be able to read the defense here. See, she takes the drive. And look, if she had spent back to the left instead of trying to go through the defense, she would have had a wide open layup going to that left hand. Not wide open because Liz Kis Kitley is there, <laughs> but a lot better of a shot. A lot more room to work with. Kitley had a couple of early baskets, setting the tone for the Hokies. 
being pestered here. Good passing by Virginia Tech. Azana Baines and one. Wow. Lytle with some showtime. <laughs> that deserves a smile after the fact. Look at the bodies on the floor for the possession, and Lytle is aggressive, a little behind the back pass. And that's not your point guard, ladies and gentlemen. That's your 3-4. Gets Baines streaking to the rim and one opportunity. Make it the three-point play. Largest lead of the game as the Hokies really starting to exert their will here in Greensboro. Amanda Butler challenging the heart of her team. Going to need to show some fight to get back in this one. Hip. Foul. Now Shepard ran into that tough screen from Hank after the fact, but I think they're getting Shepard before the screen got there with committing the foul. Foul on Shepard on the play. Yeah, Shepard looked like she just ran, tried to run right through that. First foul against Asia Shepard. How many different players have we seen initiate offense for Clemson? Now Veronica Hip is at that point guard spot. They had some changes to their roster about mid-year. And uh, everyone's had to do a little bit more. Had some players certainly have needed to step up and Liz Kitley, well that's what she's been doing all season long, stepping up. One of the league's top scorers and rebounders helped her earn that ACC Player of the Year award. Also on the all-defensive team Player of the Year, LaGina going to work. It has been all Virginia Tech. The cleanup crew, Liz Kitley, one of the best in the country, gets it to go. Remember carpooling through that snowstorm in Philly? <laughs> Seems like a lifetime ago. When companies work human, people stay through anything. When mom got sick, you covered for me. i never forget that. You have been a mentor and my friend. Happy third work anniversary. Challenges keep coming, but we keep going. Remind them of all they've built and experienced together. Because without the human, it's just work. Baby got back. Unlimited cashback match. Only from Discover. Do you think any of us will look back in our lives and regret the things we didn't buy? Or the places we didn't go. At Metro by T-Mobile, you can upgrade to 5G and get more. More choices with the largest selection of free 5G phones from brands like Samsung. More 5G coverage on the T-Mobile network. And more savings from the most affordable unlimited plan with 5G included. So whether you're heating up your grill game or upgrading your movie setup, now is the time to upgrade to 5G and get more. Only at Metro local Toyota dealers today. Buy Coyote Tractor. We dig dirt. And by John Foy and Associates. Well, Clemson pulled it to within five, but then Virginia Tech has gone on a 17 to four run to open up this lead. And Liz Kitley, as usual, at the center of things, literally and figuratively, for the Hokies. What a year, what a career so far for this junior from nearby Summerfield, North Carolina. A program changer, a culture changer, according to Kenny Brooks. And he just could not say enough about how hard she works. She stays not only in the gym, but also in the film room. She watches an hour of film with Kenny immediately, almost after every game. And he said the one thing that stands out about her is that she's not afraid to be embarrassed. You know, if there's something that needs to be fixed or changed, she's so coach coachable. 
there. And he said he almost he had to change her whole shot. You know, when she came in, said her shot was just not effective. And um, boy, he's done a fantastic job with her and with this program. Yeah, his, his work since coming to Virginia Tech certainly being noticed, especially with making that return to the NCAA tournament after such a long drought, 15 years last year. And this year, look, this team, they can pull some things off here in Greensboro, could have a chance to go back to Castle, could in the NCAA tournament to perhaps host first and second round games. They've got some work to do to get there, but they've proven over the course of the regular season, they can compete with anybody. And I think Asia Shepard may have Ooh. She's certainly in some discomfort. That's not what you want to see if you're Kenny Brooks. Yeah, that hurts when it happens, and hopefully it's nothing too serious for Shepard. Yeah, it looks like she um, banged part of the leg or maybe knee with pain. Ooh. Yeah, oh boy, that hurts. Fair or not, Hank has been in the middle of a lot of physical interactions both yesterday and today, both with her own teammates. She was part of the scrum there when Washington went down earlier this game. Now you got to get the foam roller out, hopefully get that all worked out for Shepard, get her back in the game. And looks like the officials are going to take another look at this play. Now, no foul was called on the play. Well, if they're looking specifically at the play with Agent Shepard, that was incidental contact. But I'm not sure if there may be something else there. Now, they could not go back and just assess a personal foul because it was not called originally. The only thing that they could look for there with China if it was something more egregious in nature that would be elevated. And it does not look like... Carla Fountain saw anything, nor did we, so we'll continue on. Asia will take care of herself over there on the bench, hopefully get her body and mind ready to get back out there and help her Hokies continue on what has been a great start so far in this game. A more. Just always looking, Georgia A. Moore. She finds Baines. Five in the game now for Azana Baines. And she's done a lot of little things in this game, Jim. We haven't called Baines' name specifically many times as Gaines gets a nice jumper from the baseline. But she's setting really good screens. Kenny Brooks said he needs her to be his Draymond Green, which <laughs> means she's got to rebound, she's got to bring toughness, she's got to do a little bit of everything. But she's just been solid in the execution aspect of Virginia Tech's offense without the ball. Baines transfer from Duke. And Zay Moore's off balance shot hits the back of the iron. Washington, so hard to stop. Float game complete. Four points for Washington. Now can Clemson get a stop on this end? Kitley is fouled. Ari Robinson, that's three. And remember yesterday, she also picked up three. This time it's much earlier. One of the biggest challenges when you're trying to defend Delisha Washington is to keep her out of the middle of the floor. Robinson goes to the bench. And in transition with a full head of steam, I mean, that's just too easy. And that floater comes in handy for a player that has continued to grow her game. We talked about this yesterday. She's added the three, and she knows the defense is focused on her, but she's just really creative about how she gets shots. Ten in the game now for Kitley. See, Evan Lepler, our host, he was asking why she still have that whip nickname. Work in progress. See, Evan, she's still adding stuff to her game. We're all a work in progress <laughs> all the way through the very end. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> Oh, oh, beautiful. Got her 
herself to the basket. Amor took some contact, but she'll take it and a chance to add another free throw. So Virginia Tech had run their handoff action offensively on a, on a couple possessions, and that's what Clemson was anticipating here. But there was no handoff, just a turn of the corner by Amor. Well, she's got another gear. She's got a pretty high on that. Usually one of the smallest players on the floor at 5'6", but she got up for that finish. Amor now in double digits with 10. This is a player Penny Brooks would love to see. Look for her own shot a little bit more. She's such a good facilitator. Looking at setting up teammates like Asia Shepard. And isn't it good to see Shepard back out there? Must have used that foam roller to her advantage. Feeling okay? Games. What a bright spot for this Clemson team today. Eight points for Kiki Gaines off the bench. Knowing that Shepard may be a little bit gimpy, attacked her. Right to the rack. Kitley Hanks did a good job initially, but you just can't give up on the play. Got a block by Gaines or Kitley. On the backside, all right. She got up. She's feeling it on both ends. Freshman out of Columbus, Georgia. Bradford. By Amor. Gaines and Bradford taking over this game with their explosiveness. Let's go back to that defense by the freshman. Kiki Gaines gets it on Liz Kitley, the ACC Player of the Year. What an athlete is Gaines at 5'9. Was late getting into the thick of things this season because of an injury, but she was a top 50 player out of high school. It's given them a, a glimmer of hope, especially when Delisha Washington was out of this game. And you mentioned it earlier too, LaChina, the way that players on Clemson have had to step up. They had three players depart the program. Gabby Elliott, Kira Lewis, who's a transfer from Syracuse, who joined the team this year. And then Latrice Sane, the 6'4 graduate transfer from Southeast Missouri. All three of them leaving in either early January or Sane early February, you have to adjust. I mean, that's a lot to absorb, but Amanda Butler said so many good things about the culture of this group that is here and their will to play for one another. And for three, too strong. Kitley couldn't get the basketball in her hands. Had Hank on one side, Elmore helping on the other. Tenth turnover by the Hokies. Washington. Two minutes to go in our first half. Asia Gray, that's not really her shot, that is, she gets to the basket. Really patient. She baited the defense, looked like she was going to try to shoot that three, knowing the whole time she was going to get a higher percentage look. Bradford for three, no. Tigers have yet to hit a three in the game, they're all for a four, but trailer the glass is good. When you look at this Virginia Tech team, and, you know, they want to try to win an ACC tournament championship. They will go to the NCAA tournament. The depth with Trailer and Lytle and Greg, like those players, gives them a different dimension that they did not have last year in the tournament. Under a minute to play now. Shepard and Kitley. Oh, Hank is all over Kitley. You know, if you're going to try to go one-on-one -on -one against ACC player of the year, good luck. 
No back down from the physicality from Elizabeth Kitley. And Virginia Tech sitting on 50. The most points Clemson has allowed in any half this year. Hank has her first field goal, five points in the game. But what a first half performance by the five seed in this tournament, the Virginia Tech Hokies for good measure. How about a couple more? Trailer going downhill to her dominant left hand, a little spin off of the glass. And I feel like every player for Virginia Tech has scored with the exception of Lytle in this first half. But she had that pretty assist, let's not forget. She did. That's got to count for something, oh, yeah. Jen. <laughs> what a start, the China. 52 points for the Hokies. You think they're sending a message? Oh, yeah. They're ready for March. Four players in double figures already for Virginia Tech. And if you remember, they are perfect on the season anytime. They've had three in double figures, so an excellent start for the five seed team that set an ACC record with 13. Your thoughts there, LaChina, for, you know, keys for Clemson as they try to do what Amanda Butler just said, get back into this one. Yeah, I mean, I think Clemson's reputation is their grittiness, how disruptive they can be with their offensive rebounding ability, with their physicality. I just thought that there were too many miscommunications defensively, and they just didn't make their presence felt. They didn't play harder than Virginia Tech in that first half, and that's something you can control. Kitley now with 14 points in the game. ACC's Player of the Year averages just under 18 for the season. Bradford had a great first half, seven points in the game for the Tigers. That trailed only Kiki Gaines, who came in with eight points off the bench. But I, mean, I think the message there really is one of those where you don't look at the scoreboard anymore, right? You just say, what message do we want to send about the way we play basketball at Clemson? That's what you want to take away from your performance right now if you're the Tigers. If you get some points and you get back in it, well, that'll be as a result of being who you are. Kitley, another good look inside. There's just nothing they can do to stop it once she gets it there. I mean, you got to try to put some pressure on the pass, but I mean, that's 6-6, six, six, and Clemson doesn't have anything close on their roster. 16 points in the game for Kitley, including the first two baskets of the second half for the Hokies. With four nice. strips of crispy... This is more than a race. It's a journey. Find your passion. Find what drives you. Find your line. People assume they can't afford great insurance, but State Farm has surprisingly great rates that fit any budget. Just like people assume that we have this huge research staff that's feeding us stats. The, the, the pick and roll? It's the Pythagorean theorem in reverse. Tune into the NBA on ESPN, presented by State Farm. Verizon Unlimited is going ultra, so you get more than ever. With 5G ultra wideband in many more cities, you get up to 10 times the speed at no extra cost. Buy one Samsung Galaxy, get another on us. Seriously? It's our best plan ever. Verizon is going ultra, so you can get more. Verizon is going ultra with 5G ultra wideband in many more cities so you can do more. Mindy, with up to 10 times faster speeds, she can download a movie in minutes or a song in seconds. Yep. Okay, now let's work off-site. Public Wi-Fi, no thanks. 5G ultra wideband is faster and safer and so powerful that it's not just for phones. Hello 5G home and business internet. It's time to go ultra with Verizon, America's most reliable 5G network so you can do more make a statement they belong right up there with the top teams to contend for this ACC tournament title something the Hokies have never won giving you the big picture look at our bracket 
And of course, you hone in on those teams who have yet to play. The top four seeds will make their debut tomorrow. And let's start right at the top of China. The regular season champs from Raleigh, North Carolina, the NC State Wolf Pack. Why this team is such a contender, not only for an ACC title, but a national championship. I mean, Westmore has quite the squad on his hands in NC State. I mean, this is a team that's so balanced. They've got veteran experience across the board. Their chemistry is second to none. And then you go to the Louisville Cardinals. It's always going to be a tough out defensively with Jeff Wall's team. And just two teams and two coaches that are at their best at this time of the year. And I'm going to tell you this, Jen, that ACC Tournament Championship last year between Ooh. Louisville and NC State, one of the best I have seen in the month of March. I mean, it was both teams playing at an extremely high level, and, and these coaches have gotten them back there to start this tournament. Right at the top again. You see their national rankings there. They're both projected number one seeds in the NCAA tournament. Will they meet again, or will there be another team like a Virginia Tech, perhaps, who can shake things up? Hokies trying to advance in this tournament have never even made it to the semifinal round. We'll see if that changes this time around. Alicia Washington with the performance of the tournament, really, so far. And Kayla King is down. Oh my goodness. She slipped as she was defending Delisha Washington. Just hate to see anything like that. Kayla King back in her hometown of Greensboro, North Carolina, a junior for the Hokies. Oh, the ankle. Yep. At least that's what we see in that replay. Now, what she may be feeling or dealing with, of course, we don't know exactly. But if you've ever done that, you know that hurts and could really test the will of Kayla King for what she's able to continue to do in this game, in this tournament, perhaps, for Virginia Tech. Plenty of questions still to be asked and answered as she's going to need some help getting off the floor. That's a tough loss for Kenny Brooks. I mean, their best perimeter defender. Um, you know, a, a, a capable and very good three-point shooter. And this is where that depth that we talked about earlier in the broadcast, Jen, really comes into play, whether that's Trailer's ability to come in or Lytle. You just hope that King can return at some point in this ACC tournament. She has certainly become a very valuable part of this Virginia Tech team. And you talk a lot about the three-point shooting. 91% of the field goals she's made in her career have been from three. So, yeah, she's a sharpshooter, but you just pointed out, let's not forget about that aspect of her defense. So the officials actually are looking at something else. So we're going to go back and show you on that last play. So King's down at the top. Watch the bottom left. Robinson's elbow there with Amor. That is what they are going to look at now. Amari Robinson has three fouls in the game. We're about to get an explanation here. So there was a foul called on the play on Amari Robinson for fourth. So she just picked up number four. What the question is now, LaChina, will this be upgraded to an intentional foul with that elbow? I think it will be. Um, right here, there's just unnecessary swinging of that elbow. It could be a dangerous play when contact is made above the shoulder, so the officials have to address that. Um, I believe it will be upgraded. One of the things you always look for, a legitimate attempt to make a play on the ball. I mean, she was trying to get a position for rebounding, but... The key word trigger there is unnecessary yeah. for, for that play that I think gets the upgrade.
get the result here. After review, we're going to let's stay with a common foul. Okay. Wow. Okay. I am surprised by that. Either way, still a big moment of the game. Robinson, four fouls, King out at the moment for Virginia Tech. This is for pizza lovers. Shop the Fresh Market on Thursdays and bring home a delicious ready-to-cook pizza for only $5. Made in store with the finest... was okay, but that thought you had? When companies work human, people stay through anything. Your quick thinking saved us. You saw something that changed everything. You may think we don't see you, but I'm so glad you were the one in the room with me. When people are recognized, they feel seen. Thanks. They feel they belong. Good job. Because without the human, it's just work. There's my little nephew. Mm. He looks more like dad every time I see him. Dad is old. Right. So your message said you wanted to talk about insurance? I said I want you to talk about insurance. Well, most people know that bundling home and auto saves you money. Keep saying your words. But did you know that new customers who bundle and save with Progressive can save an average of $800? <gasps> Sleeping baby. I love you too. The 45th Annual ACC Women's Basketball Tournament is brought to you by Continental Tire. For every surface and every season, Continental Tire has a tire for you. And by ZMAX Micro Lubricant. Extend engine life. Increase fuel mileage. Available at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Such a wonderful time of the year. March Madness has begun in Greensboro, North Carolina with the ACC Women's Tournament. We talked about the two favorites, the top two seeds, NC State and Louisville. So how about the next group that we're looking at with China is those potential challengers for the title. Yeah, they've all got different strengths. I mean, look at North Carolina and the momentum that they have coming into the tournament, winning seven in their last eight. And then Notre Dame, it's really about the tradition. That's where it starts, right? The expectation of winning when you have done as much in the history of your program as Notre Dame does and then has a Neil Ivey has come in and done a fantastic job on the heels of Muffin McGraw. Virginia Tech, you know, we're seeing now. Georgia Tech, we know they're capable of. They hit a little slide towards the end of the season, but um, Nell Fortner's got just about as much of a talented team and a gritty team as you will see in the month of March. Getting a look at some Tar Heels. Courtney Banghart busy at work. Her team will face the winner of this game tomorrow. And we're going to get a chance to hear from Courtney Banghart. Top of it, we'll be talking with her later in this game. So stick around for that. to give you a little preview of what's to come tomorrow. Tar Heels split the season series with the Hokies. Virginia Tech winning the most recent contest as Washington drops in a three. Two defenders closing out on Shepard. Shepard, excuse me. Like, how did I miss Shepard? Yeah, Shepard with the three. Now Robinson out. Shepard may start to feel a little kind of way, Jen. You know, not seeing her. I think earlier you may have uh, Counted Shep. I know, I gotta start. You know, I'm sorry, Shep. <laughs> it's a number two thing. I think you have something against the number two. That's the rumor I'm gonna start. Kitley has to get out of the double triple team, gets it to Shepard, six to shoot. We saw a lot of one on one coverage on Liz Kitley in the first half, and that time, Clemson deciding to collapse. Shepard. Double block. So it's not just Kitley who's blocking some shots. And, and maybe we should look back at what she does in the offense then. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> two players closing out, including the outstretched arms of Hannah Hank. And Asia Shepard didn't need much space or opportunity to get that up. Hank offensive rebound. She is fouled by Baines. 
second personal on Baines. And Asia Shepard just keeps on breaking records. She's already the all-time three-point leader in ACC history. And now for the third straight season, she has broken the single season three-point record. Now has 88 on the season. has just been so reliable on the perimeter for Kenny Brooks in her career at Virginia Tech. And it's not easy in, in the ACC where, I mean, especially the earlier part of her career, it was really guard dominant. And I think in the latter years, we're seeing more of a, a post play being dominant. When you think about the days of Dana Evans and the Asian Gers and, you know, the many perimeter players and, that have been so good in this league. And, and Asia Shepard will lead as one of the best. Trying to leave on the strongest note possible. Do something the Hokies have never done before. Advance. Let's get to the quarterfinals next. And then keep on going. Maybe give themselves a shot at winning their first ACC tournament title at the buzzer. Shot got off in time, but no contact with the rim. So Clemson will take it over. Those are the kind of possessions that you're very happy with if you're Amanda Butler. Like, she wants to see her team continue to give that effort. You know that they're down by quite a bit here. But can you rally? Bradford, off the glass and in. Nine points in the game for Nunu Bradford. Transfer joining the Tigers this year. Was a junior college All-American. Good hands by Washington. Takes it away. Easy look for two. Just six points in the game for Washington. Good defensive effort there by the Tigers trying to force the turnover. A little change up for Clemson defensively with some zones and trapping, giving Virginia Tech some different looks and it's giving them some trouble here. Time out on the floor. We'll take a quick break as well. Clemson trying to show some heart here in the ACC Tourney. Now's the time to get a Ford built for you, by you. Pick your color, your wheels, and other available features specifically designed for your Ford. Want an F-150 with a 12-inch touchscreen? 400 horsepower in an Explorer? Or a moonroof? You've got it. And now an additional 1,000 bonus cash on top of all public offers. See your dealer for a Ford built for you, by you. Build and order your select Ford today and get 1,000 bonus cash in addition to all public offers. Back in action in Greensboro. Virginia Tech gets it into Kitley, who immediately has two Clemson defenders around her. And they get the tie up and the possession. This is the Clemson Tigers team that we know, right? Falling on the defensive end, making life hard and miserable for this Virginia Tech offense. They need more of that. Tigers without Amari Robinson on the floor with those four fouls. They need some help off the bench. They'll get it. Skyler Blackstock, her first point to the game. Clemson going a little smaller with Robinson out of the game. More of a four out, one in. But Hank can also play on the perimeter, as we know. So they can play a five out with this group. They've got a ways to go, but is an 8-0 Clemson run made their last three baskets. Bradford turns it over. Good hands by Trailer. Kayla King out of the game. Remember we saw her go down as now Amor is fouled on the three-point attempt by Bradford. Bradford's second foul. That'll send Amor to the line for three. That's got to be frustrating. You don't want to foul the jump shooter. There's Amari Robinson. She got a little foul trouble yesterday as well. And they miss her on the glass more than anything. Her battling for possession when she's out. When you think for the Hokies right now, I mean, they were just on fire in that first half, and now it's really just a matter of management almost to some extent. 
and you want to keep up with all that was good that you were doing. Here comes Robinson back on the floor. They'll just have to try to manage her as best they can, playing with four fouls, and we still have five minutes to play in the third. Robinson was open. Washington's going to take it herself. Left it a little short. Shepard had it poked away. Washington, 33 yesterday, and she was 8 of 10 from the free throw line to help that total. She'll go to the line here after Amor commits her third person. You have to wonder, is this the last time we get to see Alicia Washington on the floor in a Clemson uniform and in the China. How much does that go through her mind in these moments? Oh, she's definitely thinking about that, you know, but I think Amanda Butler would be the first to say she's had a, a few years, right? <laughs> she's had more than her fair share, I think six seasons, it feels like. Um, but she'll have an opportunity to play at the next level. She actually reminds me a little bit of, of Courtney Williams. Um, not quite to that level of talent, but Courtney Williams is, is a very explosive mid-range game. I think Washington is probably better at getting to the rim, but both, you know, extended the, the range of their game as jump shooters and just are dynamic. I, I think she'll have an opportunity for sure. I just want to be honest to admit that I was counting on my fingers all of her seasons to confirm that you are correct. This is her sixth yeah. college season <laughs> since she started in 2016 at the University of Florida, was named the SEC Co-Freshman of the Year that 16-17 season. It's been an odd time that we've all gone through and you appreciate the positive stories, the opportunities that these players have gotten to get an extra year. You see a lot of records that have been going down. Shepard has a few of those. And let's look at the silver linings and a chance to see Delisha Washington play a little more. I'll take it. That stop and pop. Beautiful. She has 10 points in the game now. Tabitha, you can add a little bit on Delisha? Yeah, guys. Well, Clemson's head coach Amanda Butler told us that, you know, she's a relationship expert. She loves being loved. She chose to come back this extra year to see what a pro lifestyle is like how you recover, how you sleep, how you rest, how you work out, the amount of shots you get up. Amanda Butler told us that Washington is so coachable and we trust each other and that she knows I won't ask anything of her that's not in her best interest. Come on, Tabitha. I thought you were going to tell the story about how she was going on a Facebook chat with somebody because that goes back. I that mean, she's too. on Facebook. That's how you know her age. She was, <laughs> she was on Facebook with one of Amanda's staff members' mom. <laughs> <laughs> so she was digging deep <laughs> for that one. Saying you come into the game, and of course, what we pull out of it, of, of this very endearing story, it was like, oh, well, she does turn 25 in May. <laughs> no, but it, it does speak very much to the person that Alicia Washington is, I think. Hank ready to shoot, and in. Hank just had a solid ACC tournament. Big game yesterday, career high. It has just done some good things, the little things. It's got to be a, a joy to coach. And if you're Clemson, you're trying to claw points back as best you can and get a little help from Virginia Tech, which they have done. The Hokies have gone over five minutes without a field goal. 14-2 Clemson run. I mean, you had a couple more, you get a couple more stops, and now you're saying, okay, this is manageable. Of course, that's money in the bank. And that's not manageable. Kitley going baseline, toughing up on that. And something that Coach Brooks told us about his team, he said, Kayla King is my security blanket. Right now, she's not on the floor. And I think she's a player that gives everyone calm when she's out there. Beautiful move by Robinson. What a take. Taking it to Kitley. But so we may be feeling some of that adjustment as well without King on the court. Kitley gives you a pretty good amount of security as well. She has 18 points in the game. Right about at her season average, one of the best in the conference. She asks for the ball in position to score. There's a difference between just asking for it and asking for it in a place where all you have to do is turn and score. And she gets the right angles. She makes herself big. 
huge target for her teammates to see her available for the pass. And then there's just the skill set that allows her to score from different areas around the bucket. All of that leading into this player of the year campaign in the ACC. Washington, great move to the basket, no finish. But the steal to get it back. You think Delisha Washington wants to keep on playing? Woo, no, too much mustard on that pass. Oh, man. Washington here just oh, oh. <laughs> catches Amor by surprise. A little physicality there, too, Jen, I think, that you just saw, yeah, right? Yep, sure did on that look. A little bump and run. Might have been a foul that was not called. Good passing. Trailer to Kitley. Kitley going to the free throw line. Second foul on Hannah Hank. And you talk about Kitley's growth, too. Jokingly called Kenny Brooks the free throw whisperer because Kitley really struggled from the free throw line early in the season in the non-conference portion. And he talked to her and worked some things out, just tried to simplify a little bit of her routine as she got to the free throw line, and she has been excellent, especially in conference play. And going to need a moment here. Kitley ready to shoot some free throws. The officials are talking things over. We'll share once we have an idea what they're looking at. We're wondering just as much as you are at the moment. The play is under review for a possible on a blur foul. Thank you, Carla. Carla Fountain sharing with us. So just as a reminder, you cannot go back and call a common foul if it was not called originally. What you can call is an intentional foul if you think that was something that may have happened that you missed. So that's what we've been told they are looking at on the last play. And you've heard Carla Fountain use the word unobserved, which means they didn't see it. Okay. And it looks like Nunu Bradford might have taken a hit to the face. Um, from trailer in the backcourt. Watch right here. Right as she catches that, there's some contact to the face of Bradford, but it like a basketball play. Incidental contact. Would agree. So I agree with you the last time too. We have to uh, defer to the judgment of those in the stripes. And again, looking for something unnecessary or even higher upgrade would be something excessive. I saw neither of those things on that play. Is it neither, neither? Uh, you know, come on, either, either. Come on, come on, Emory. <laughs> I think whichever you prefer, I'm good with, I like neither. Okay. <laughs> You know I got your back. Yeah, I think neither isn't even really a word. <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, <laughs> we await the decision of the officials just to determine what could happen here. Either way, we know. <laughs> I just use both. Yeah. Kitley will be <laughs> Kitley will be shooting free throws. The question is whether Clemson will also be awarded some free throws if they do believe that there was an intentional foul on that play. Well, we have a moment, though. Let's look at our Coyote Tractor turning point. It After started. review, the play is deemed to be incidental contact. Hold on that. Now we'll go. It started early, LaChina. It's the shooting of the Hokies today. Been pretty good. Yeah, they have been outstanding in shooting the basketball. 68% from the field, 43 from three-point land. And Kenny Brooks probably, as I'm looking at him right now, is thinking about 10 things they haven't done well. But in the second half, they have cooled off. And you have to credit Clemson because they have changed up their defenses. They've been a little tougher, made easy looks more difficult. They've gotten back in transition. So they're making a, a bit of a push. But it's just tough because of the balance and how many weapons Virginia Tech has on that end of the floor. Kitley around and out on the second free throw attempt. 
She has 19 points in the game. I hope is not just one for the last seven. The Tigers have showed some of that fight that Amanda Butler was calling for. Some of that heart Hank at the free throw line. No, a lot of bodies colliding trying to grab the rebound. Can't we'll get a little break to Asia Gray on the floor. Travel before Washington could get going on that last play. Just the sixth turnover of the game for Clemson. I mean, that is one area that they really struggled with yesterday, despite getting the win and playing so well in terms of their scoring and their field goal percentage best of the season in that win against Syracuse but they did struggle taking care of the basketball I think Tabitha talked about this at half is the rebounding they were so good on the glass against the Cuse but they are getting out rebounded right now against Virginia Tech five on the shot clock Shepard slicing through everybody 15 now for Asia Shepard Hokies all-time leading score, over 1,800 in her career, and she's looking for more. Robinson playing with four fouls. Which way? It's called on Greg and Virginia Tech. The scouting report on Amari Robinson is to anticipate contact. You saw that's what Greg tried to do on that possession, but may have started that pursuit a little early. I don't know. I, I thought Robinson did dip the shoulder. I just don't think there was enough actual force for a foul call there. Maybe more anticipation than anything. So Robinson lives to play another minute or so. Hopefully more. She makes the free throw. Greg picks up her third personal foul. Perfect from the free throw line in that trip for Robinson. Gives her 10 points in the game. 11 with that second free throw, excuse me. Good, we got double! Double! Clemson is not making life easy for Virginia Tech, despite the big lead. Yeah, they've held it to 14 points in this third quarter after a 53-point first half. Uh, what's the third personal foul committed by Delisha Washington? It puts Asia Shepard on the free throw line, the best free throw shooter for the Hokies. 89% on the season success rate. <laughs> I think overall people would say that Shepard's number's a little bit down for the season. You see she averaged 13 points per game. But she's putting up the numbers now. Oh, and, and developing this aspect of her game. Right? So not just a three-point shooter, but can get to the rack creatively. And, and Kenny Brooks has said that it's her footwork. You know, whenever she's not shooting the ball particularly well, it's always her footwork and getting back to the fundamentals and and so she may be feeling a little bit of pressure in this season, but no doubt, Asia Shepard's one of the best guards in the country. 17 points in this game. Final few seconds of our third quarter. Washington is fouled. She's going to make you try to stop her one way or the other, and the Hokies do bring three defenders over. It'll be Baines who gets whistled for the foul. That's her third. And Kitty Brooks talked to Tabitha Turner about that at the half. You don't want to keep putting them on the free throw line, knowing that they've got the foot speed advantage in, in several of the matchups on the perimeter. And definitely, Alicia Washington has the advantage. Tigers 16 for 17 on the line, make it 17 of 18 in the game. It's a dozen for Delisha. She has eight of those since halftime. Oh, he's led by as many as 30. <laughs> 
Claymore, just all she can do to hang on. And that is exactly what the Hokies are trying to do. Hang on, get to the next round where they're gonna take on the North Carolina Tar Heels, the four seed in this tournament. Their head coach, Courtney Banghart, you'll hear from her coming up when we come back. Crack the top four in the ACC. Just talk about what your team has done this year and how they've gotten to this point. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. My guys are certainly, they're having a great year. You know, they, they've only lost to four total teams all year long. Twice, of course, to NC State. Um, you know, and haven't, haven't lost anyone outside the top 25. So it's a group that's battled. A little fun fact, we're probably the only team in the, well, we are the only team in the top six that doesn't have any COVID senior. So uh, we are we are true, the true team tr uh, through and through, and I think we're playing well on both sides of the ball. That's interesting. Now, you brought up the COVID senior, and I actually explain it to me. Just explain it one more time for the audience because I found it really fascinating. Yeah, so what happens is is everybody's given, um, was given an additional year uh, from last year. And so if you look at NC State's roster, for example, they have four guys on their team that are actually – they, grad, they would have graduated, and they wouldn't have been able to come back had it not been for COVID. So, you know, when you look at some of their premier players, Delisha Washington out here, a uh, handful of the transfers that are here at uh, Virginia Tech, you know, these are guys that, that um, were supposed to be gone, and they stayed. So, just again, we got a young team, and they just, uh, I'm so proud of them, where uh, so many new guys have cracked the top four. It says a lot about their heart. All right, Coach. Well, it sounds good. Thanks so much for being here, and uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I appreciate it. It's a fun event. I'm glad to be here. Go Heels. China, Jen. Thank you, Tabitha. Great to hear from Courtney Banghart. It's a beautiful thing to watch Kitley as long as you're not trying to defend her. Right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. But it, it's just fun to watch Carolina's young team mature over the last couple of seasons. You know, I remember when Deja Kelly was just a freshman. And, you know, they knew they were going to have to take some bumps with such a young team. And now that experience is starting to pay off. And, you know, you talk about us speed, but Kennedy Todd Williams, to me, is the X factor. I mean, her game has grown so much and her ability to attack the game from so many different angles, whether it's rebounding, defense, her offense has exploded in, in different stints this season. And I really think that how she plays and how she approaches this tournament could be the difference maker. Should be a fun matchup tomorrow. Indeed, the Hokies do get through. They lead Clemson by 22 at the moment. Those two teams splitting during the regular season, Virginia Tech and North Carolina. And in that first matchup, Kenny Brooks will tell you, it was one of his team's worst performances of the season. They weren't moving. They weren't moving without the ball. Trailer with a three here. And they had to figure out how to get back, get better. They were in the last meeting. They got the play at home in Blacksburg. They got the win in that contest. Well, and at this point of the of the year in March, you can kind of throw out the early games. You know, you do want go back and watch the film if you're coaches, but it's a different mentality, right? And I think the biggest factor for Virginia Tech is they've got some upperclassmen, especially in Asia Shepherd, that want to make a mark. She wants to win an ACC tournament championship, and, and how does that play into things? Time out on the floor as Trailer was put in a tough spot there in the corner. Her team bails are out with a timeout. We'll take a quick break as well. You want to make pizza night with... USAA is made for the safe pilots. For Mac, who can come to a stop with barely a bottle. Lucia, who announces her intentions even if no one's there. And Sergeant Moore, who leaves room for her room. With USAA Safe Pilot, when you drive safe, you can save up to 30% on your auto insurance. Get a quote and start saving. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. Stuff. We love stuff. And there's some really great stuff out there. But I doubt that any of us will look back on our lives and think, I wish I'd bought an even thinner TV. Found a lighter light beer. Or had an even smarter smartphone. Do you think any of us will look back in our lives and regret the things we didn't buy? Or the places we didn't go? Having a 5G phone that's not on T-Mobile makes as much sense as playing ice hockey. Using pool noodles. 
get out of the penalty box with 5G coverage like this. T-Mobile has more 5G bars in more places than anyone. T-Mobile, more 5G bars in more places. Another reason T-Mobile is the leader in 5G. It's tournament, first of four games coming your way today from the Greensboro Coliseum. We've got Florida State Boston College coming your way next, 2 p.m. Eastern, a lot of NCAA implications in that one, as there are for Duke and Miami. Wait for us, George Tech will finish us off, but how about this one, China? Looking forward to this matchup with the Eagles and the Seminoles. Yeah, two teams that really want to have a good showing here as we kick off of March Madness in the ACC tournament. I mean, Boston College is a team that when you look at their balance, their experience, Cameron Schwartz, most improved player, Taylor Soul does a little bit of everything. And then Florida State's attack is led by Morgan Jones. But the depth of Florida State, I mean, Sue Samaral has had to go deeper to make some adjustments to her roster throughout the season because of COVID, but also because of injury. And, um, you know, they are a team that definitely wants to make their mark. And as we come back out here live on the floor, that's Kayla King all wrapped up on the side. So mark that as a big question mark. Indeed, Virginia Tech does move forward. Will they have to do it without one of their best shooters and defenders? We'll see. Washington on the break. Boy, Clemson is to get some points. It's a great way to do it. They did it in transition yesterday quite a bit. 14 now for Washington. And in case you missed it earlier, this is what happened to Kayla King in the third quarter. She's defending on the play there. Goes down holding that right foot. Yep, looks like she landed awkwardly on that ankle. Was not able to put any pressure on it as she went to the bench. She's all wrapped up. So the junior now a spectator, at least for the remainder of this game. And again, it, it just calls up Trailer, who I think has played some really good minutes to probably have to do more if King is unable to go tomorrow. The good thing, too, is Kitty Brooks has a couple of forwards that can play 3-4. You know, Lytle can come in and, and jump in on the perimeter where needed. So he's got some interchangeable parts um, that he can use if he's got to get creative with his lineup. But no one does what Kayla King does for this team defensively and also, again, her three-point baking ability. Five to shoot for Robinson and the Tigers. Shepard with the rebound. So when you think about what Virginia Tech needs at this quarter, then part of it is figuring out how to play without their security blanket, as Kenny Brooks calls her, in case that is what they have to do moving forward. Uh, you better believe Kenny Brooks is testing out some, some different looks and lineups and responsibilities just in case. No look from Trailer to Gray. Two of those key contenders to help carry the load a little bit if King is unable to play. Fourth foul on Maddie Ott on the play. Trailer 14 points in the game. She had just one point in the first quarter, really picked it up in the second, has hit a triple so far since halftime, and Deja Gregg on the free throw line. Demo, as they call it around the Virginia Tech program. Here comes Lytle into the game, the transfer from Liberty. One of their best ever three-point shooters of the Liberty Flames, and you know Liberty not that far from Virginia Tech. Kenny Brooks seeing that type of three-point shooting, that's gonna catch his attention when Lytle becomes available as a grad transfer. It's a different thing now with the portal and with all the transfers as far as how coaches are building their rosters and what they can find. It's added a different dimension to their jobs and to college basketball, quite honestly. Both teams have been really good when they've gotten to the free throw line in this game. And we've seen quite a few trips to the free throw line for both Virginia Tech. 17 for 20 from the line as game spins and goes off the glass. And Clemson has just one miss. They're 18 for 19. As Alicia Washington is on her way out, Clemson fans have to be excited about what they have seen from games. She has really come on strong in this tournament. There's Washington with the ball in her hands on the break. Has Bradford with her. She's just going to do it herself. Why not? 
the magic of the finish of Delisha Washington. I don't know. I don't even think she could see the bucket. Doesn't matter. 16 points. About half of what she had yesterday. But giving it all she's got. As is Asia Shepard with another triple. 20 in the game now for Shepard. Four three-pointers to her name. Virginia Tech making Delisha Washington see bodies. See how they've got several defenders just collapsing, taking away any kind of space. Gaines fouled. She'll be going to the free throw line. Alicia Washington going full speed, but how about the finish? Did not even have eyes on the rim here. She could only see the backboard, but that was enough. She's had that game face on most of the game. And it has been a pleasure to watch her play throughout her career. There's the player you just said. Maybe we'll help to carry that torch when Felicia Washington says goodbye to this Clemson program. Games, my freshman. Really picking up her play as this season has gone on. Now, Liz Kitley on the bench at the moment. Picks up her second personal foul on that last play. She has a double-double, by the way. Let's not take those for granted. Her 15th of the season that leads the ACC 34th of her career. Washington once again trying to force the issue. And if the Tigers are going to go out of here today, they're going to go down fighting. I think that's the message that Amanda Butler has given to her team. Amanda Butler, the ACC Coach of the Year a couple of years ago, the 2018-19 season. Her first year with the Tigers. She's got to be proud of the way her team has responded. We've talked several times about the changes, major changes to her roster this year, and the younger players having to grow up quickly. They came into the ACC tournament, were able to get a win despite a rough finish to the regular season. And they've shown a lot of heart and a lot of effort. I do not discount the effort that you're seeing on display here. I mean, you can look at the scoreline, you see what it is. You remember those points that Virginia Tech put up, over 50 of them in the first half, and still this Clemson team is running around out here like it's their last game, which they know it very well could be. The season coming to a close as Washington still somehow manages to get the basketball, and then I think when she rolled over on her back. Her coach saved her, yeah. and the butler got her a timeout. <laughs> yeah. She's going to reward that effort with a timeout. I mean, when your best player is going all out and you're down 22 points with 4.07 left to play, that tells you all you need to know about the trickle-down effect of what Alicia Washington can do for that group. Well, we just talked about Liz Kitley's 15th double-double, and let's take a look back at some of her numbers with China. Player of the Year is in the building. Liz Kitley with a strong showing here to kick off the ACC tournament. 19 points, 8 for 10, only missed two buckets. 3 for 4 from the free throw line. 10 rebounds. Was also a presence defensively for a Clemson team that likes to drive to the rim. And these are solid numbers. Liz Kitley, our Hardy star to watch. It's what you might have predicted coming in with the ACC Player of the Year. She did not disappoint her family in attendance or anybody else watching this game. Gotta love a little uh, midday popcorn there. Oh, you know we're envious. We Lachana, are. Lachana and I do love our ACC Tournament popcorn here in Greensboro. We love our ACC Tournament popcorn and our kids' day. It's been so great yes. seeing the kids and their, their energy and the pom-poms. 
and Kitley may well be able to get a little rest here for the rest of this one. So important in a tournament. And remember, you know, Virginia Tech having to play this game. It came down to the last game of the regular season. They had NC State, the regular season champs, on their home floor. Played them tough right down to the final seconds. Asia Shepard had a shot to win it as Washington adds a couple more to her tally. And now they wound up dropping to that five seed, having to play today. So you're going to have to manage an extra game now because you have the five seed and not the double bye. But any minutes you can rest on the bench for some of your star players, so key. And that's why the management of Kayla King's injury is so important. I mean, the athletic trainer for Virginia Tech are definitely going to be on the clock as soon as this final buzzer as far as ice and making sure that rehab and, and everything is done because when you're already facing a tournament having to play back to back to back if you can advance you need all the all the all the players available that you've got Kayla King wondering how that foot ankle is gonna hold up she and a lot of other people in Virginia Tech jerseys Alicia Washington, by the way, fourth foul on the last play. Four team fouls for Clemson, three for Virginia Tech. Not a pretty sight over there on the hokey bench. Well, that play right there, Washington couldn't finish it. But I have seen that play this season. Love it for the Tigers. The alley using that verticality that Washington brings. Can't quite finish that time. And another way that Kenny Brooks is saving legs, having this team play some zone. Last couple of times down the floor, instead of chasing around screen, trying to save their legs. But I'm sure we'll see Shepard and maybe Amor coming out soon. Now Shepard. Amor both over 30 minutes played in this game. This has got enough to, to sub him out. I don't know. I'm looking over at the bench as he coaches. They <laughs> can't come in. Yeah. Turnover by the Hokies. That is their 21st turnover. That's not a number that's going to sit well with Kenny Brooks. No, he talked about that. Again to Tabitha, and that's where Virginia Tech has to continue to just execute it and lower that margin for error. And all the coaches have said this year consistently as they've gotten into conference play, this league as deep this year as they have ever seen it. And I think you look at this Clemson team, the 13th seed in this tournament, the perfect example, because they were never an easy out for anybody. I mean, look at the way this team plays. Yeah, it's a 20 point lead for Virginia Tech, but do you think Hokies are gonna come out of this and say this felt easy? No way. They'll be a little banged up, too, with the physicality of this one. Lytle. Gives it a shot, Taylor Diamond, number 35, also coming in to try to take some of those minutes off of players like Shepard, who is on the bench right now. Amor is still out there. Washington. Well, she has certainly put in a tremendous performance this ACC tournament. 33 points yesterday, 19 points today. She's done all she can to lead her team, and now that Butler's going to bring in some of her bench players as well and perhaps bring Delisha Washington off the floor for the final time. There's a lot in that hug. A lot of years, a lot of respect and love between those two coach and player. You can hear some of the crowd cheering as she left the game. Alicia Washington has had a great career. And I know even though Clemson as a team hasn't gone as far as she probably would have wanted, she has left her mark on the program. And as a player, she's left it out on the floor every night and gave us so many highlights. You can see her trying to hold in the emotion on the bench. And it's tough when you reach this point in your journey that you fought so hard for so long. And now you see that end a minute away.
Virginia Tech started about as well as you could possibly hope for. Came in hot in this ACC tournament and haven't looked back. They had some lapses. Right now they've missed their last five, but they built up enough of a lead that even the heroics of Delisha Washington were enough to bring the Clemson Tigers any closer. And now Virginia Tech will be moving on to the next round and a date in the quarterfinals with the North Carolina Tar Heels. Another congrats to Delisha Washington on a great career. I mean, Clemson relied on her to do everything and she answered the call night in and night out. Just a great player. Hokies winners today, 82 to 60. Our final score is Virginia Tech moves on. They shoot the ball at the best percentage they have all year long, 59% conversion rate for Kenny Brooks's team. We hope you enjoyed today's game between Virginia Tech and Clemson. Come back at 2 p.m. A lot on the line for Boston College and Florida.